Today I'm going to demonstrate how to knit a chunky hat. I linked to the pattern below and I called it the Lewis and Serena hat, which you can find on my website and on Ravelry. I'm going to show every step of the process from beginning to end, but if you need any refreshers in the basics, such as how to do the knit stitch or the purl stitch, check out my how to knit playlist, which goes into more detail. For this project, I'm using Bernat Softy Chunky Yarn in the colors Glowing Gold and Teal Waves. All the supplies I'm using today will be linked in the description below, and please remember to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with my knitting tutorials and patterns. We'll be using yarn, a pair of scissors, a set of size 13 US double pointed needles, a 16 inch US size 13 circular needle, a darning needle, and a stitch marker. The optional items are a pom-pom, a knitting tag, a stitch counter, and measuring tape. For reference, our finished hats are sized for adults and are about 9 inches wide and 8.5 and inches tall. The ribbing is about 2.5 and inches tall. We're going to start by casting on to our circular knitting needles using the long tail cast on. I'll show you the cast on here, but if you need a closer look, please watch my video on the long tail cast on linked above. We're going to cast on 42 stitches plus one extra stitch for joining in the round, with a total of 43 stitches. Because we're using the long tail cast on, we need to assess how long of a piece of yarn we need to pull before adding our initial slip knot. Since we need 43 stitches, I'm going to wrap my yarn around the needle 10 times to give me an idea of how much yarn is required for 10 stitches. Then I'm going to multiply that length by 4 and then pull a little extra, which will ensure I have enough yarn to cast on 43 stitches. Start by creating a slip knot and bringing it snug to the needle in your right hand. Then make sure the tail of the yarn is facing the front of the needle and the yarn that's attached to the skein is in the back of the needle. If you need to, remove the slip knot and turn it around. Next, put both tails in between your middle finger and your ring finger. Then, using your thumb and index finger, go through the tails and pull your fingers back, creating a loop on your thumb and a loop on your index finger. Use your needle to go up into the loop on your thumb and then go down the loop on your index finger, and then bring that loop through the loop on your thumb and pull it snug onto the needle. I'll show you again. Make sure you're pulling the stitches close, but not too tight. You want an even, consistent, snug, but not too tight tension. I'm going to continue casting on 43 stitches and I'll see you at the end of the row. I just finished casting on 43 stitches. Now we need to join the stitches in the round. If you ended up with a really long tail from the long tail cast on, feel free to cut it a little shorter, leaving about 5 or 6 inches. It's important during this step to make sure that when you join in the round, your stitches aren't twisted. To join in the round, slip the first stitch on your left needle to your right needle. Then, using your left needle, put your needle under the second stitch, or the original first stitch on the right needle, and pull it up over your left stitch. It might be very loose after you do this. If it is, use the tails to pull it back snug against the needle. Your work is now joined in the round. You'll need your working yarn to be on the back side of your needles. If you're like me and accidentally left the yarn on the wrong side when you joined, while you're filming a knitting tutorial, just push your yarn through the needles towards the back of the work. Next, find a stitch marker. You can order official stitch markers online, or you can easily just tie a piece of scrap yarn in a contrasting color into a loop to use instead. Before you begin knitting your first row, put the stitch marker on the right needle. Anytime you knit to the marker, you'll know that you've just finished a row. As always, a quick reminder to make sure that when you begin to knit, you're using the yarn coming from your yarn skein or ball, not from the tail yarn. Even as an experienced knitter, I still occasionally make that mistake, and it's not fun. We're gonna begin knitting our hat in a one-by-one -one ribbing. Start by doing the knit stitch. Then, bring your working yarn to the front of your needles and do a purl stitch. We're going to continue in this pattern, knitting one stitch, purling one stitch, knitting one stitch, purling one stitch, until we reach the stitch marker. If you need a refresher on how to do either of these stitches, I'll link again above to my How to Knit Basics playlist, which will cover all these methods in more depth. Next, you'll want to slip your marker from the left needle to the right, which is sometimes abbreviated as SM in knitting patterns. Once you finish your row, you'll want to start keeping track of your progress. I'll click my counter to one since I just finished one row. Then we'll continue in the same knit one, purl one pattern for another seven rows, with a total of eight rows of ribbing for the brim of the hat. I'm going to finish with the brim and I'll see you at the end where we'll switch to stockinette stitch.
Okay, I just finished my eight rows of one by one ribbing, and now it's time to switch to the stockinette stitch. You just knit every stitch of every row. For this pattern, we're now gonna knit 18 rows in straight knit stitches. In the pattern, you'll see this written as rows nine to 26. Remember to keep track of the rows every time you slip stitch marker, and I'll see you after I finish up the 18 rows of stockinette. Okay, I just finished my 18th row of stockinette, and now it's time to decrease our stitches to create the top of the hat. When you knit a hat from the bottom up, you'll eventually need to decrease the stitches to create the top of the hat. To do this, I'm gonna first finish up the last stitch and then move the stitch marker. To decrease this row, we're gonna repeat a pattern of knitting one stitch and then knitting two stitches together, then knitting one stitch, then knitting two stitches together. In patterns, knitting two stitches together is referred to as K2TOG. So let's get started. I'm gonna knit one stitch, and then I'm gonna knit the next two stitches together. It can get a little tight sometimes, so try not to knit too tightly at the top of the hat so you don't end up struggling to decrease the stitches. Continue in this pattern until you reach your stitch marker. When you finish this row, you'll now have 28 stitches remaining. For the next row, go back to knitting each stitch, just like we did in the main section of the hat. This row is back to straight stockinette stitch. For the next row, we're gonna move the work to our double pointed needles. Start by picking up one double sided needle and slipping eight stitches onto the needle. Next, grab a second double pointed needle and slip 10 stitches onto that needle. Then slip the remaining 10 stitches onto the third needle. You'll now see that your 28 stitches are broken up between the three needles, and you'll be using the fourth needle to knit the stitches. For the next two rows, you'll be knitting two together every single time. Grab your fourth needle and start to knit just like you did with the circulars, but each time you'll be knitting two stitches together. It can take a little practice to get the hang of what to do with the other needles while you're working on the left needle, but it just takes a little practice. Continue knitting two together until you finish all the stitches on that needle, leaving four stitches on your right needle. Now you'll be using your left hand needle as your right hand needle, where you'll be knitting off the next double pointed needle. Continue to knit two together until you have 14 stitches total on your needles. We're now one round away from completing the hat, and we'll be doing the same as previous row, knitting two together for every stitch. When you're done with this row, you'll have seven remaining stitches. At this point, cut a nice long tail from your yarn and thread your yarn onto a darning needle. Use the darning needle to thread your yarn through all seven stitches, pulling the yarn through to make sure you've caught all the live stitches on your tail yarn. When you have all seven stitches on your yarn, pull the top closed. Use your darning needle to pull the tail down inside the hat. Then turn the hat inside out and using your needle, secure the tail yarn by tying a few knots inside the hat. If you'd like to add a pom-pom, you can use the tail yarn to attach the pom. Use the needle to bring the yarn back up to the top of the hat, but put the needle to the side of the top hole rather than the center. Look for the loop on the bottom of your pom-pom and bring the yarn through. When you thread the yarn back into the hat, enter the needle on the opposite side of the hole where you came up before. This will help the pom-pom sit closer and tighter to the top of the hat. Repeat this process a few times, each time entering and going back down in different sides in order to keep the pom-pom firmly attached. Turn the hat inside out again and use your needle to tie some additional knots. You can then cut your tail shorter and use the needle to thread the extra yarn through a few loops. The inside of the hat is fairly forgiving with this kind of thing since you won't see the inside when you're wearing it. The last thing you need to do is secure the tail from the beginning of your yarn. Turn the hat right side out and put the yarn on the needle. If it looks like you need to bring that area a little bit closer, just go through a loop or two to cinch the area closed. 
Then go inside the ribbing of the hat and bring the yarn through a few of the loops on the interior of the hat where you can secure the tail with a few more knots. The last thing I always do is to add a knitting tag. I'll link below in the description to the shop where I order my tags. Our Lewis and Serena hats are finished. I knit these hats in just a couple of hours so they make a great quick project that you could finish in one night. If you end up making this pattern, I would love to see your project. Please share your photos with me on Instagram at Diana Levine Knits. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like, comment below, and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with my latest knitting patterns and tutorials.